Uh, I remember last year you talked about just how challenging yeah. it was for a variety of yeah. reasons. So, I mean, are you expecting it to be like that again? Kind of what's your expectations as far as that goes? Lord, I hope not. You know, last year was a roller coaster. Uh, best way of putting it, we had some big wins, including beating Iowa on the road and and uh, some big ACC wins. Uh, but then we also had some tough losses, and uh, that's not what we want to be about. We want to be consistent, not in, not out, knowing what we're going to get. And so we got to get back to that that type of uh, culture where uh, every night you play NC State, you know you're going to be in for a battle. Well, Zoe Brooks is a player, the yeah. freshman that comes in with a big name, a lot yeah. of hype, um, highly rated. What yeah. can we expect out of her? What have you seen from her? Yeah, excited about her. Uh, she came in even better than advertised, probably. Uh, she is, you know, we got some really good freshmen, but they are freshmen, so that's what concerns you. They're going to be probably a little bit up and down. Uh, but we got a good core of veterans as well. It's kind of fun. A year ago, we didn't have any freshmen, and I think that hurt us a little bit. First time in my career where we didn't have some young kids out there. So it's exciting. It kind of rejuvenates you having some, some young kids uh, mixed in with the veterans. And uh, uh, again, Zoe Brooks, special player, off the bounce, can shoot the three, really sets her teammates up well. So uh, excited about what she's going to bring. How important is it just before you get to conference play, just having those tough opponents and yeah. non-conference Yeah, you know, I just think it's really important. Our goal is to try to have the hardest non-conference schedule in the ACC and one of the top ones in the country. And so uh, we're excited. First week of the year, you jump right in the fire with UConn. And, uh, you know, that's going to be on ABC. It's, a you know, just a big game for our fans also to finally get Connecticut down in North Carolina for a change. So uh, that's exciting. But, you know, we go to the Virgin Islands, have Kentucky, Cincinnati, and Colorado out there. Uh, so, again, and now the SEC Challenge, you add that. And then this league is brutal, just not in, not out. Great players, great coaches on the other bench. So. Uh, it's a challenge, but that's what makes it fun, you know, trying to shoot the rapids through that, that schedule. Plus, I saw you guys went to Blowing Rap. How important are trips like that yeah. for, you know, just camaraderie yeah. and getting these trips? Yeah, ride. we try every fall to go either uh, to the mountains or the beach. And uh, we rent a couple of houses, and uh, usually, you know, while we're up there, we have a day where we do nothing but maybe uh, – zip line in the mountains or jet ski you know at the beach things like that and then on sunday we have a scrimmage against uh, a, another division one program uh, and it's just a great time for our players to kind of get a combination off the court stuff and and building that unity and then also uh, testing ourselves uh, against great talent have you seen more unity than what you saw last year around this time yeah, again, I just think uh, last year was a, a tough year mixing the returning players that were fresh off three ACC championships uh, and throwing in three McDonald's All-Americans out of the portal. Uh, just didn't ever seem to quite get on the same page and click the way we wanted. Uh, like I said, it was it was a tough year. Uh, you know, this will be my 35th year as a college head coach. Uh, last year was probably the most challenging. and. And that's why we're excited about this year, seeing uh, seeing if we can get back on track where we want to be. Have you started to see it click a little bit? You know, during preseason, just kind of the team, you know, just clicking a little bit more team chemistry wise. Yeah, and I think so. And again, don't get me wrong. Last year, you know, I think the chemistry was was okay, uh, but we maybe just got away from the team being the point of emphasis. You know, uh, it's it's tough nowadays when you have the portal, nil, all those things. At the end of the day, it's still a team sport. And uh, as much as I love for player, individual players to get their accolades and, and attention, uh, at the end of the day, it's about the team and, and how well you play together. And so uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we haven't played a game yet, but hopefully uh, everybody's gonna buy into that concept. Coach, step back to the Virgin Islands for a second. Yeah, I'd love this to. Is, this is the second time you've, you've had a team at the Paradise Jam. Right. What's what's the allure of having a team play any of these early yeah. season tournaments like this? Well, I think first of all, we try every Thanksgiving, we're going to go someplace warm and tropical. Okay, <laughs> whether it's, you know, in this case, Virgin Isles, the Bahamas, Cancun, Hawaii. Uh, we're going to try to do something like that every Thanksgiving. And then also, you know, when you go to this tournament, you're going to be playing against great competition. So we're excited about, again, 
this is what's going to prepare you for the ACC. The ACC is going to be brutal night in, night out, and uh, you don't want to have a you know shock when you step on the court in that first ACC game. So I think we're doing everything we can to uh, make sure that, especially with so many freshmen that we think are going to play, uh, they need to, to realize uh, just how they have to bring it. Uh, against this type of competition. Is that also part of that whole team building exercise? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, what's great is I put a Speedo on and go out to the beach, and within five minutes we have a private beach all to ourselves. So it's a great experience. <laughs> How do you feel about the state of the rivalry right now in the triangle with UNC? Wow. Duke? Yeah, it's tough. You know, I think the baby blue, the dark blue, uh, they're both very talented. Uh, and, you know, right now, uh, being in the pod we're in uh, with the two locals and then Virginia and Virginia Tech, uh, those are the teams we play twice, so it's a tough schedule. And uh, But yeah, I think they've both done a great job. Uh, Courtney and Kara Lawson both have uh, done a really good job putting rosters together and, and are very talented. And uh, so again, gonna have to play really well. Coach, is there like a sort of identity that you want your team to take on this year? Something that they want to excel at. Well, I'm going to go to it again. I was trying to leave it out because I use it too much every day, everything. But, uh, yeah, I want us to be like McDonald's French fries, okay? You know, anywhere in the world you walk into McDonald's, you know what you're getting with those French fries, right? Come on. Even though nowadays my players may want to go with the Chick-fil-A waffle fries, I'm focused still on McDonald's fries, okay? I want us to be like that. Every night, no matter where we are, where we're playing, where we walk in, you know what you're going to get. You're going to team that's mentally, physically tough, going to compete and play with urgency. I want us to be hot and salty, just like those fries. Hey, Wes, I also wanted to ask about the new locker room. Yeah. Um, that looked like it was pretty cool to walk into. Yeah, we're excited about it. You know, you want to give your players everything you can and, and uh, the best venue to play in. And then, uh, in this case, you know, the locker room is their space. The only time I ever go in that locker room is if we have a recruit in. Otherwise, that's their area. And so now you got water massage tables, sleeping pods, you got a hair salon chair. If you look good, you play good. You know, great nutrition area. Got an Apple computer in each in each locker. Uh, so hopefully they'll maybe do a little bit of academics there. If they got some free time or maybe watch a little bit of film. Uh, and I'm sure they won't be on social media, I'm sure. Is there, they just did the McDonald's analogy there, is there a saying or analogy that the players have, you know, they're young and they talk a little different than even us now. Like, I mean, anything they say that you've kind of adopted. That I've kind of what? Anything you, they say that you've like adopted, a saying oh. or, or Yeah, uh, I don't know, I'd think about that. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, again, like I said, they're, they're in a little bit different era. I don't know if the McDonald's fries <laughs> is, is great for them, but I think they still get it, you know? Yeah. But uh, now, I mean, I, I learn something from them every day, believe me, so. Uh, Probably too much to mention. Coach, can you talk about Charlotte at all? I've actually played the last year you opened with Charlotte, I believe. Yeah. Now, can you just talk a little bit about what yeah. they bring? You know, UNC Charlotte, uh, they've done a great job with that program there. And, uh, you know, we know what they're about, their, their toughness. I mean, they, they bring it every night. They're well prepared. And uh, that's the scary thing, you know. You play them opening night, and you know your players and fans may be looking ahead a little bit to that next one. Uh, but I know we're going to have to play well opening night. Uh, again, we're trying to schedule the best schedule we can, and UNC Charlotte's part of that. Coach, what does it mean for Madison Hayes to kind of wait at her turn, yeah. try and get that opportunity probably to start for you this year? Yeah. You know, Madison's somebody I recruited really hard out of high school. She's from Chattanooga. I spent 15 years at UT Chattanooga, so I've known about Madison for a long time. Uh, the first time she got tricked and went somewhere else, but uh, finally uh, she saw the light. And so uh, just, she's, you know, nowadays everybody talks about threes and D. And I think that's her. She, she can guard about anybody. She has the length, but also the quickness. And then she's really good when she can spot up and knock down that three. Coach, um, we're a year away from it, but you got three new teams coming to the ACC yeah. next year. How do you think that's going to impact women's basketball? Yeah, I'm excited about it. Uh, you know, first of all, from a selfish standpoint, grew up in Dallas. I love the fact, you know, I grew up watching SMU when they were back in the old Southwest Conference. Uh, their AD, Rick Hart, was also my AD at Chattanooga for part of my tenure there. 
Uh, so I'm happy for them, and I think you're going into the Texas market. We all try to recruit kids in Texas, uh, so I think that'll help. And then, you know, obviously Stanford, Cal, both uh, have had quality programs uh, to add them, and again, add that West Coast market. Uh, I think it'll be fun, you know, and uh, you got some new, new faces and new challenges, and uh, I'm excited about it. Any sense how it might impact scheduling? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I've heard stuff. I'm like y'all. I'm hearing things. You know, it may be a situation where you play everyone once, and then maybe have one rival game where you play home and away, uh, and then you flip it each year. And I think that's a great, great way of doing it, uh, if that's what happens. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, again, I think uh, you know those those teams are are going to just add to what you're trying to accomplish with the net and all those things. I think Kenny was hoping it kind of breaks up your pod so you guys don't want uh, to Amen. Each other <laughs> amen for that, I'm telling you. So uh, I agree. We, right now our pod's really strong. So uh, anything we can do to avoid having to play all those teams twice is fine with me. Did you talk to university leadership at all in the, in the lead up to that? Or did they come and ask your opinion at all? Uh, you know, I think uh, Boo was very open about it and kept us very informed about what was going on. So we kind of knew ahead of time, knew a little bit about, you know, the ramifications of it. Um, so, yeah, I think they did a great job of keeping us abreast. Obviously, that's way above my uh, pay scale, <laughs> that decision. But I did tell Rick Hart at SMU after it happened, hey, I was the one that got that done. <laughs> and so uh, he definitely owes me maybe an enchilada dinner and a corn dog from the state fair. So, Coach, what kind of adjustments do you guys make in the offseason to kind of prepare for the upcoming season to take a step forward and then also account for all the new transfers and the freshmen coming in? Yeah, you know, I think we're, we're pretty consistent with what we do. We try to recruit to our system. Uh, again, it's uh, different a year ago. We didn't have freshmen. So this year, it does make you go back and maybe reteach things, which I think is good for the veterans too, you know, to hear those things again. And just to have that energy and, you know, I'm, I'm excited about it. It kind of rejuvenates you having young people again. Uh, so I'm excited about the core we have returning, but then also the new faces that we feel like can uh, step in and, and give us a different dimension. Leadership in the group that you retain the kids that came back? Yeah, I think the, the veterans are doing a great job of trying to serve as almost like assistant coaches on the floor, pulling the freshmen along, making sure they learn the ropes, so to speak. So uh, I do think we've got good veteran leadership that, uh, you know, unselfish and, and uh, get the idea of the better we can help those freshmen grow up, the better we're going to be. What are the expectations going into the season? Do you talk about things like conference titles or anything? Like yeah, I mean, I think at NC State, that's always your expectation. You know, we want to, you know, try to compete for an ACC championship and then, you know, hopefully uh, have a high enough ranking and, and position in the conference that, you have an opportunity to host uh, the first and second round of the tournament and and hopefully getting better every day, every week, so that by the end of the year you're you're playing your best and, and have a chance to make a deep run. What do you think has been the impact of players taking that fifth year, that fifth year on the conference? Yeah, it's no doubt made a big difference. You know, uh, when now you're talking about you can have a 23-year-old playing against 18-year-olds or 24-year-olds. I mean, heck, I think, you know, we got Mimi Collins. I think she's drawing, you know, NIL, cost of attendance, and maybe Social Security also. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. You know, some of them have been around as long as I have. Do you think it's impacted the way you or other coaches in the ACC has it impacted the way that you look at recruiting? Like maybe no I'm going to go the portal versus high school. No doubt. I think what you do, you still want to go after the players, <clears throat> the elite high school players. I think the difference now is where in the past you maybe had to take your second or third choice if you lost out on your top choice. Now you have to weigh, do I really want to go ahead and take this player or do I want to wait on the portal and be able to get a veteran uh, with experience? So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's you got to really have to think about do you really want to sign this player to help with your depth or do you want to wait and hopefully hit a home run in the portal? So you went to the portal to get 
Lizzie, uh, you know, whack defensive player of the year. How much of that is is what's going to happen when you guys have a hole or yeah, somebody I, else in this league has a hole? You go down and you find someone from. I, no doubt. I think that that's where the portal is helps you fill a gap and with some experience. You know, I think probably a uh, junior college route has in the past been that. I, I, I'm sure it's impacted junior college recruiting. Uh, but yeah, in our case, we felt like we needed more size and depth at that position. And uh, you know, Lizzie, as you mentioned, uh, you know, someone that gives you that link. I think her offense is getting a lot better. Uh, so that, and then you know, with us, KP uh, getting her uh, from Sac Sacramento State, uh, great three-point shooter, you know, over 40 percent, and we we wanted that at our fourth position. So, uh, yeah, I think you go in the portal looking for a specific need. Can you expect freshmen to contribute this year? They're going to have to, no doubt. I think uh, we're excited about them. Uh, I think they all are going to be really good players. How well, how fast can they grow up and be able to handle the transition? I mean, let's face it, y'all, it's a big jump from high school basketball to playing, you know, power five, elite level. Uh, so that's going to be the question. Can they step in and, and handle that transition? But, you know, I'm confident that they can. The question is how quickly can we get that done? Wes, he just said, can they handle the transition? I mean, especially in a league where you know, some years you may have five of the top eight scorers leave. Maybe it's a little bit down. On the this year I think it's 12 of the top 15 scorers are back. Eight of the top ten, eight of the ten first teamers are back. Thanks. It's not just, yeah, not, but it's not yeah. just the Thanks top tier. Just keep going, though. I do. Okay? You've known me long enough, and I'll uh, keep doing no, it. No, I know the league is is at a great point spot right now. I mean, probably as deep with Tomlin as as definitely I've ever seen it. So uh, that's the challenge because now, let's face it, when a kid goes in the portal, they're going to look at ACC schools. You know, I mean, it's it's a great conference. So consequently, these teams. You know, they already have great talent, and now they're able to, you know, spice it up with a, another piece or two. And so, yeah, and like I said, you're also we're, – we're excited about our freshmen, but they're 18 years old. Some of them aren't even 18 yet probably, and now you're going against 23, 24-year-olds. Uh, so that's that's scary. Does that make you more hesitant or give a shorter leash, so to speak, with a kid when maybe you normally would – when you look at what's back and the amount of talent back, that makes it a little bit of a – can't live with as many youthful mistakes maybe because of the level that's out there. Yeah, I mean, I think in our case, though, you know, we, we had a lot of seniors a year ago. So uh, now we're going to have to, you know, we didn't, we didn't get quite the same uh, depth out of the portal we did a year ago. So I think our freshmen are going to have to play. And, again, I'm excited about them. I mean, it was top ten recruiting class. Uh, they, you know, they all bring different things to the table, uh, but we'll see how quick. You know, we're not going to know that probably until we step out there on opening night, and and then, you know, like I said, it's going to be how quick can they adjust. Will you put the hand, the ball in the hands of Zoe Brooks, and, and she's your starting point guard, or is she going to have to do something to show you that? She yeah, again, I'm I'm not as worried about who's starting. You know, I think she's definitely one of our top players. But heck, the last three years we've had the ACC Six Player of the Year come from NC State. So I do like having some punch coming in off the bench to kind of give you a little momentum lift. So you know, I don't worry about who's starting as much as they do. I can promise you, I worry about who's finishing the game. That's what counts. Will, will this freeze Sanaya up to to be Sanaya a little bit? Well, I, I hope so. And I think you know, you can play her at point. You can play her on the wing. Uh, so I, and I think it's always the same way. You can play her at both spots. You know, you don't necessarily have to be the point guard to be the one uh, setting teammates up and and distributing the ball. I think Zoe's got great court vision. She's unselfish, uh, so she's definitely capable of, of putting the ball in her hands. Uh, but you know, Sanai is a special athlete. You know, so uh, I guess it's a good problem to have. Speaking to the growth of women's hoops in the area, when you all played at Carmichael this year, I believe it was the first sell crowd for them there since 2015. Because of our, our great fans that were there. Uh, you know, we travel. We travel. And uh, so I do think, uh, you know, but again, there's no doubt. Our area, the teams in our area are, are definitely getting better and, and are some of the top teams in the country. And so there's a great excitement in our, you know, in the Triangle area. And, uh, 
so it, may, it makes it fun. But I, I do like the fact that when we go on the road to one of those places, I remember one year we took like 14 or 15 bus loads of fans to Duke. Um, and people ask me, how did you pull that off? Hey, we got fans that are excited about women's basketball at NC State. Yeah, I mean, like you were just saying, and, you know, obviously it was a lot of red in Carmichael, yeah. so, you know, got to yeah, shout out you your fans. But, <laughs> um, but just how does having the seats filled with fans, I mean, packed for those big matchups impact oh. your players? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, they put so much work in. Now, it's year-round now, folks. I mean, you know, you have months where you can only go eight hours a week and months you can go 20 hours a week. But even, you know, on their own, they're putting so much time into it. You're talking about the weight room, on the track, all that stuff. It's great to see them now being recognized and uh, getting the accolades that they deserve, the attention they deserve. Uh, it's awesome. And, uh, yeah, again, where our game has gone the last few years in particular is, is unbelievable. And I think it goes back to the talent level and the entertainment level. You know, it's fun to watch. And... Uh, you know, especially, like I said, in the Triangle area, there's a whole lot of talent and great rivalries and uh, it makes it fun for everybody, including our players. It feels like UConn this and... This is the uh, last one for Coach. I've got to get in for sure. a live segment. It feels like UConn and South Carolina have joined the ACC. You guys are playing them. I think Carolina's playing It yeah. seems like they're... Yeah. Th those kind of, of sectional matchups or... or you know, I was seeing Iowa go out and play a lot of teams. I think they're playing Virginia Tech down here. Right. What does it mean for the, the growth of the game to have the best teams play yeah, the best teams? you got to do it. You know, that's that's where you get, you know, our game with UConn's on ABC. You know, we don't get as many games on ABC as we'd like in women's basketball. Uh, so, but they're not going to show you playing against, uh, you know, a mid-major. you got to go out and play that schedule. And if you do, you're going to have those opportunities to be on that big stage. Thank you.